Good morning, everyone. Hello. So uh, we're coming to you live from our kitchen. What? I know it's a different part of the house. It's like we've never explored this house before. I know. So we've moved away from the sofa. Yeah. Just to give you guys a little bit of interest. Yeah. I mean, look at the exciting background that we've got. I mean, yeah. Ooh. Who doesn't love a bit of magnolia? Well, come on. It's it's a bit more interesting than white. So. It is. You know, we are trying for you guys. We, you know, yeah. probably some of the best things that have happened in 2020. But I think today we'll top it off though. Do you think? I think maybe moving us, moving from the kitchen, second to top. Oh, okay, yep. But I think I think what's coming today can can smash 2020. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So. For today, uh, for you guys, just for you guys who are watching this, um, we have got some guest music all the way from Poynton Baptist Church. Yeah, I know. It's it's going to be amazing. We're going we can't wild. Wait. Yep, Absolutely we cannot wild. wait. And then we've also got an update from Source, which is our youth project, youth ministry project. Yep. Um, and then what else have we got on? And then we've got Paul, um, who has recently finished um, the last series we were doing. Uh, he is going to be talking to Rob White about how they first met, which is it's sure going to have some good, good stories there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then Rob is going to be talking about the Holy Spirit. And I believe that he is also going to be starting a new series Ooh. about the Holy Spirit. Wow. I know. Yeah. So uh, that's... The man, the myth, the legend, Rob White. Oh, yeah, you went there. You went there. That's the Trinity, right? That's... Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Don't know. Yeah. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Oh, right. Yeah, that... that, that yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll go with that. Anyway, um, <laughs> and, and if that's not enough for you, we've also, at the end of this live stream, got a Zoom video call. So stay tuned for that. The, po the link will be posted in... The description or the comments which i think is now down there i feel or, like we do this there. a lot of the time don't we when we just we flap talk. our arms around yeah we anyway we should probably so shut up and let church crack on yeah yeah yeah, yeah. okay yeah go on over then. to point and baptist church yeah enjoy enjoy
Good morning, everybody. Um, so welcome to this week's Source Update. This is obviously different because we're meeting over Zoom. Um, we thought this would be a, a good way to talk to you a little bit about some of the things that we are doing in current lockdown. Um, normally, of course, we'd have the cafe open, we'd be running various sessions, and uh, that stuff has stopped for now, but we're doing some different things instead. Um, all of our work in school, all of the mentoring, all of that kind of thing is still carrying on as normal. Um, but I'm here with, with Joe and Gemma, who uh, we've literally just finished doing a workshop session with some of our young people. Um, so we'll talk about that in a, in a second. But Gemma, do you want to say something about what we have been doing as a, a sort of like alternative to the Rock Cafe hangout sessions? Yeah, of course. So on a Friday, we are um, Zooming with the young people uh, four till five, um, that's me and um, Joe Stansby, and we're just having a bit of fun with them. So um, last week we did um, Scriblio, which is a little bit like Pictionary, and that was really fun. And the week before I did a quiz with them. So nothing heavy, just the end of the week, a bit of fun to finish off the week for them before the weekend. It's been really great Good stuff and we're recording this on a wednesday which is when we run our scope workshops and these are workshops um to give young people the tools to to manage their own mental health and well-being uh, well um normally again this is something we do in person but we've been doing it over zoom at the moment and the session that we've just done just now uh, has been uh, led by joe joe has taken the young people through a couple of exercises Joe, do you want to say something about um, what we've just done in this session? Yeah, sure. Yeah, so um, yeah, we started off um, looking at um, putting together a, a self-soothe um, box or a, a kind of relaxation box and just looking at different things that we might put in there, sort of things that we like to look at, uh, photographs, um, yeah, books that we enjoy reading, um, uh, then things that we like to listen to, so pieces of music or um, you know sounds that we find really relaxing um, and then yeah things that we like to touch to smell um, so there are sort of five different categories that um, we just had a really nice chat really about the sort of things that help us to relax and what we would put into that self-soothe box and whether it's actually a box that they kind of put in their cupboards or um, whether it's just like a collection of pictures that they maybe put on their phone as a bit of a pic collage so um, so yeah, we started off with that and then we moved on to a bit of a, a muscle relaxation um, activity, which, which was great. We got them all to turn the cameras off and um, we just went through different sort of parts of the body, um, your hands, your arms, your shoulders, uh, forehead and face and just, um, just kind of used our muscles really to get them very tense and then to feel how relaxing it is once you, you, know, you, you stop tensing those muscles. So um, yeah, it was great. Good Keep stuff. Gemma and I joined in with those exercises as well. Just feeling so <laughs> relaxed now. <laughs> Everything is great. Pretending you're a cat. Or... <laughs> yeah. it was exactly. Brilliant. Squelching our feet in imaginary mud. Um, <laughs> all good fun. But anyway, so even though lockdown's uh, obviously happening at the moment, we're still doing what we can to, to get alongside all of these young people in different ways, and, and we will keep doing that. So hope you're all keeping really well, uh, and we'll see you soon. Take care. Bye. Bye. <laughs> this morning our special guest i don't know if i can really call him a special <laughs> guest i don't think that's the right term rob really but no not but... special <laughs> <laughs> well <laughs> but yeah, no uh he needs no introduction from Life Church Wimsow people who are watching this morning, co-founder of Life Church with uh, his wife Marion. Um, and today they are pastoral advisors. I think their main responsibility today is pastoring just two people, me and my wife Krista. We <laughs> class them as our pastoral advisors and our mentors. Um, and if you're watching and you're not from Life Church Wimsow, you might not know that Rob, who I'm about to uh, talk to right now, um, has a long and distinguished career of ministry and church leadership from directors of Youth for Christ UK, various pastoral roles in churches around the country, co-founders of Hope for Justice, you might not know that, and they helped start Spring Harvest going back many, many decades. 
uh, many, many years ago. And the list goes on and on. Rob, how do you do it? Because you're supposed to be retired now. We, we're supposed to take over from you at the beginning of the year. But even getting yeah. you to do an interview today, I've had to wait hours for you. You're so busy. <laughs> no, no. All it does is show that we're desperately old if we've done that much. Um, but it's amazing, isn't it, how God how God leads you. He's just led us over the years, given us various things to do. And we're, we're highly privileged to be where we are now and thoroughly enjoying the church with you, with you and Krista leading it. Really, very much so. Thank so you. it's good we to be have, talking. We are thoroughly, thoroughly privileged as well to uh, follow in some uh, big shoes uh, behind <clears> you. Well, you've left an incredible heritage and legacy in the church so um big shoes mm -hmm. to fill but but listen we've been talking all week and that's what i want to get to today we've, we've been talking yeah. a lot this week especially on text we've both been at a conference awesome conference um called launch the yeah this year was um was reframe and i think well how many people was it was it like five, five, I think it was 518 something like that 518 people from all over the world online yeah. this year because of the uh, the pandemic. But yeah. tell us some about your ha ha um, highlights this week, Rob. It was a great conference. Well, the highlights, I think, I think, I mean, the whole thing was about reframing God, reframing people, reframing church for this age in which we're living, this pandemic age. And I think the highlight, the highlights were the people that spoke about how they had actually got to grips with what the church might look like in this next in these next few years because you know i think what we heard is it's it's not going to go back to where it was yeah. it's going to move forward and in fact it might move back in one way and it's more likely to be about small groups micro churches is the phrase rather than the big thing and the highlights were people who shared about what that looks like for them with practical examples and how that became mission focused rather than maintenance or me focused oh yeah i love that i mean one guy i'm not really familiar with from the us uh, dave ferguson i know you you've um, yes him before but one one bit that jumped out for me in, in one of his sessions he started the session by talking about google um and that was quite interesting he said there's been a spike during covid on Google of searches for God, uh, church online, and most interestingly, and this is what I want to really open up uh, today with you, uh, it's the word spirituality. Yeah. People are searching for spirituality on Google. There's been a massive spike in searches. I mean, what would you put that down to? How has that happened in our in our nation around the world? It's amazing. I I think it's definitely because because of the lack of hope in people. I mean, hope has, has died a lot because everything they know seems to have gone or be going. And I think whenever that happens, people begin to turn to something else. Yeah. And I think the word spirituality has been quite, um, quite trendy currency, hasn't it, over the last 10 to 15 years. People talk about spiritually, I feel spiritual, I'm on this spiritual search, etc. And I think people are, therefore, they're looking beyond themselves for something more transcendent. A lot of them weren't necessarily be thinking God, but thank God the answer will come back. In many of the cases, spirituality, God is the person to look to. Jesus is the person. Christianity is the thing to look to. Yeah. So I put it down a lot to that. And, and I think that, yeah, so much of a search going on. We're just living in strategic days and what i wanted to share specifically today was you know part of my journey into um spirituality which you play a big part in some people might not know this um, <laughs> but my journey goes back to the 1980s 1982 i became a follower of jesus christ the best decision um, i've ever made and i was i was uh, born again into a um into a pentecostal church and it was called pentecostal because of the day of pentecost when the oh yeah spirit first came um to the early church um was shed abroad and i i, I thank god for those days I, I never knocked those days but it did give me a, a kind of a warped view of what spirituality is all about to be honest i was kind of scared of spirituality um pentecostals were very renowned for um 
operating in the gifts of the spirit and manifestations of the spirit so sometimes you know we we could be barking like dogs or swinging from the chandeliers <laughs> on, on any one sunday and that was my introduction to to spirituality you know and for six months yes. i struggled with that i was born again 1982 and then strangely enough um in early in 1983 six months later i went to a conference called spring harvest um, it's, I mean, uh, it was in Prestatin, um, I think, if I'm not um, yep. mistaken. And on an afternoon, I walked into a, a tent, a blustery white tent on a field, and there was two guys stood at the front, and they couldn't have been more different from each other. There was one very um, straight, tall English man talking very good English, and next to him was this American who, when he spoke, he spat. He was like, he was just over the top American. Do you, can you guess who those two blokes were? Um, well, one of them was definitely, um, one of them was definitely, okay, I'll tell you what, my name's Tony Campolo, and I've come over here. And well, that was one of them. I can't imagine, can't imagine who the other one was although yeah i have a mild guess but a mild guess I'm a mild um, guess. he's one of the two guys on this interview there, there's a clue <laughs> well actually paul i think it was me rob white from from the commuter belt of surrey <laughs> around south london and i was contrasting amazingly with tony campero's frightful americanisms <laughs> and i was frightfully frightfully english <laughs> you was frightfully english and here's here's the thing you wasn't just frightfully <laughs> english i walked into that as a pentecostal i sat at the back you did your seminar the seminar was great you and tony campolo life changing it was really good but at the end you did the strangest thing because your seminar had nothing to do with spirituality really and i remember sitting there at the back and at the end you just said oh we can't end the meeting today um without talking about the holy spirit and i'm sorry that's how you said it the holy <laughs> spirit and i thought you know as a people, that's not how you talk about the holy spirit you spit and you, you move your hands and it's all you know it's holy spirit man um and you said these you said these words i've never forgot them this is the first time i'd seen you the first time i'd met um uh, rob white uh, you said does anybody wish to receive wish wish to receive the holy spirit and some people stood up and you started to pray <laughs> But you, you didn't give up. I didn't stand up because in my mind, I was thinking, I know about spirituality. I'm aware of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. You know, around that. This is yeah. not how you do it, mate. I'm thinking, this is not how you do it. But you pushed and you pushed and you gave the, again, the opportunity. So I thought, okay, it's worth a try. So I stood up and you said, okay, you, you there, receive the Holy Spirit. And something <laughs> to this day, so it was like, I, I, I still can't explain. Something hit me. Something hit me here something took over my, my, my spirit and my testimony is that was the beginning of of my uh, ministry it was the beginning of god doing something in my life something a lot deeper that needed to be done but but here's the point god blew away my misconceptions on, on that day in that tent of the holy spirit and spirituality and i'm so pleased today after this interview you're going to talk further about that but here's something you mm. use in, in your talks a lot. You talked about not being spirit filled, but being spirit fueled. And do you know what? Rob, yeah. 30 years later, that has stayed with me. And that still speaks to me 30 years later about how the spirit of God wants to come in and give us the fuel to, to live the Christian life. Absolutely. Amen. Hey, at least in that tent, I didn't say, hey, great, mate. Can you get filled with the Holy Spirit? <laughs> and, you know, nothing would have happened. But I had to be myself. And um, praise God for that story. That's just wonderful. And when well, you and I met, you know, we just that, thought, well, I fancy that then. going back all those years. Yeah. Who'd known, Rob? Who'd known 30 years later our paths crossed? Um, it's yes, really yes. Now that, you know, taking the church forward. But absolutely still for, still for what you're imparting into us and and we're, we're going to go now to a song from point and baptist church they're going to um sing another song for us you'll enjoy this but get ready we're putting a song in at this point from point and so we can just prepare our hearts for what god wants to say to us around this whole area of spirituality and the holy spirit 
So I'm looking forward Amen. to this. So wherever you are, Amen. put your coffee down, get a notebook or something if you want to take notes. But be prepared for what God's going to do in the next 20 minutes. Rob, it's been great to speak to you. See you soon. Eh? Good to speak to you. Thanks, Paul. God bless. Bye. song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Jesus the name above every other name Jesus, the only one who could ever say, Worthy of every breath that we could ever breathe, we live for you. Oh, we live for you. Holy, there is no one like you. There is no one beside you. Oh, everybody wherever you may be it's good to be with you and uh, I was going to say it's good to see you but of course I can't uh, you can see me um, and I really hope we can share some good things together we're speaking I want to speak about the Holy Spirit and about the Holy Spirit in the life 
of his people or in the life of people wherever they may be and um, I've entitled this spirit fueled which is a bit of a play on the term spirit filled but actually came up with the term because I was thinking of how our lives are fueled for service how the spirit fuels us to actually live the right life uh, are we actually primed and ready to go ready to live ready to be what God wants us to be and this morning uh, I, I wanted to to look at the subject uh, with an acronym on the word SALT S-A-L-T and I'll get to the first of those the letter S in just a moment but let me ask you what does a what does a spirit fueled or a spirit filled person look like what do we think a radiant face long devotional times 37 and a half revelations before breakfast you know all that kind of thing no 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 I mean those things are good the gifts of the spirit of course are great God gives them uh, from his grace and uh, hopefully we spend time in devotions hopefully our face isn't always clouded um, with with uh, anger or disappointment or discouragement but those are that's not what a spirit fueled person looks like let's just have a, a read of Luke chapter 1 and verse 35 and this is after the angel has told Mary the mother of Jesus that she is expecting this baby boy and Mary says how on earth can this be and the angel says the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Actually, in the original, it says this holy thing to be born to you. And you might be saying, well, what, what's that God? How does that answer the question? In this way, that when the Spirit of God came upon Mary, yes, she gave birth to the Son of God. Was he spiritual? Of course he was spiritual. But she gave birth to a perfect human being. And as this human being grew from babyhood to boyhood to manhood, he would have been this perfect human being. And being raised and being a Jew, he probably would have had the dark eyes the dark features, the rather prominent nose of a usual Middle Eastern male and lived a wonderful human life. And I truly believe that for us as well, when the Spirit of God comes on us, fills us and fuels us, we become truly human. So what does a spirit fueled person look like? They look truly human. Jesus was not in his body, just a, 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 a temporary disembodied spirit who was borrowing a body for a time. Jesus was all man, all God, and what a wonderful human being he was. He lived a wonderful human life. Sometimes get this picture maybe of Jesus sort of standing on the top of a tower with a lycra costume with a big J on, on the chest, a bit like Superman. And then he swirls down to rescue the person in distress and then changes back into an ordinary person. We know that Jesus wasn't like that. Jesus was fully God, but fully man. And when we are spirit filled or spirit fueled, we hope to become truly human beings who are good to be around, beings who are good to others, beings who live fully humanly, fully humanely. So let's put aside for a moment the more supernatural things of the spirit. Let's concentrate on the fact that if we're filled with the Holy Spirit, 
we are truly human and that's the way we live. And of course, in that way, we demonstrate that we are followers of Jesus. We become more like him, more like his father, God. I'd like to go into Ephesians and that's where the verse that we we know so well that tells us be filled with the spirit and as you probably know or you'll remember the actual uh, tense and meaning of that in the original Greek was be being filled with the spirit it's not just a one-off that we need to go on being filled with the spirit if we're going to go on being truly human but when we look at that verse in its context we find it's surrounded by the way we as followers of Jesus should live. In Ephesians, Paul is talking much to people who have become Christians and he's actually contrasting their old way of life with the way of life that is now expected of them. And it's actually very detailed. It's more detailed than that uh, section in scripture uh, in another book where we read about the fruit of the spirit, which obviously tells us what the fruit of the spirit looks like. But this in Ephesians is far more detailed. And actually all the way from chapter four and verse 20 of Ephesians through to chapter six and verse nine, there's a real description of how this lifestyle should look. And right in the middle of it is this verse about be being filled with the spirit. You could almost imagine that the readers thinking, OK, yes, my old life was like that. Yes, OK, I understand my new life should look like this. But how on earth is that going to happen? And actually what Paul Paul's answer is how it's going to happen is that you are going to be spirit filled. You're going to be spirit fueled. And interestingly enough, the analogy in Ephesians 5.18 about being filled with the Spirit is about being drunk with wine. It says, do not be drunk with wine, whereas in, where, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. And I've often wondered, why, why, why contrast those two particularly? Why not don't overeat or don't be hedonistic or something? And my my sense is that what it is is this is that when when you're drunk it affects the way you behave and paul's saying don't let anything else affect the way you behave be filled with the spirit because the holy spirit will affect the way you behave so let's read a few verses from ephesians um, i've picked a few from ephesians chapter 5 and if you're making a note or anything, uh, I've gone for verses 1, 2, 8 and 15 to 21. I've had to pick out some because we haven't got time to read the whole of uh, chapters 4 to 6. Follow God's example, therefore, as dearly loved children and walk in the way of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to excess and debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another with psalms, hymns and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Hey, 
there's a passage that's talking very definitely about lifestyle. And as I've said, you look around it and we'll talk more next week about some of those, uh, some of the patterns of lifestyle that come as we're spirit fueled. But for now, I want to take the first letter of that acronym on the word SALT, S-A-L-T, and the word S. And the word S stands for service, because as we, as we find ourselves filled and fueled by the Spirit, surely what the Spirit urges us to do is to serve, because Jesus himself was a servant king, and we are compelled, we're propelled to serve. And there are a number of ways in which we can serve. We can serve our neighbours. We can serve whether they're Christian or not. We can serve anybody. But in the book of Ephesians, uh, there's a very specific part where it talks about serving as part of the body of Christ. And that's the challenge that I want to bring to us this morning. Are you serving and playing your part in the body of Christ, probably within your local church, which will be the main expression for you of the body of Christ. Are you playing your part? Are you a spectator or are you a server? Are you a giver or are you a grabber? Are you actually playing your part or are you pleasing yourself? And I ask the same questions of myself. Let's read again from a well-known passage um, in, in Romans this time. For just as each of us, Romans 12 verse 4, for just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. And then it goes on to talk about a list of gifts. We haven't really got time to go through them there. But you'll know what the gifts are and the gifts of the Spirit and the various ministries. Are you playing your part? What is your part? And then if I go back to Ephesians, and we'll go look in chapter 4, verses 14 to 16. In fact, I think for time, we'll actually go just to verse 16, which Paul says, From him, that is the Lord Jesus Christ, the head of the church, from him the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. Each part does its work. I don't know if you've ever suffered like I have, getting up in the morning, got pins and needles in your leg, or you've even got dead leg, and you try and put your leg to the floor, and you stumble slightly, it's very uncomfortable. You can't walk to where you want to walk. Or maybe you've actually broken a limb or even maybe just a finger or you've you've got a you've got a wound on a part of your body that can't function much anymore you know what it's like how it holds up the body how it halts progress of daily life i've got to say in all honesty at the moment i've really i've had a bad knee for about a month and i some people say well you know did you do it playing extreme sport no i certainly didn't it's probably uh, the aging process but is it hindering my walking is it hindering sometimes my sleeping yes it is because that part is not working well at the moment and if you are not playing your part and we're not playing our part in the body of Christ then the whole body suffers and you and I actually need to be thinking as spirit fueled people then that fuel is there that we might serve and that we might be those people who bring joy and we bring the presence of God into the lives of others. Now, I know at this moment that's not easy with the uh, restrictions imposed by the government because of the current pandemic. Maybe you feel your gifts and your, the part you can play cannot be expressed well. 
but it could be in a small group. It could be on the Zoom uh, meeting that you have. It could just be uh, with a friend, with a phone call. It might be a word of encouragement. It might be uh, making a cup of tea or a meal and taking it round to someone. It could be writing a text or an email to people and just bringing that encouragement. Whatever it is, we can still play our part. You are still needed. The Bible talks not just about a body, but the church as a family. And as a family, have you ever had a family occasion where you all expected to come together? And because one person was ill or um, some person was laid aside with an injury or something, they couldn't turn up. Don't you feel the loss of that person? Don't you wish they were there? Because somehow that member of the family brings something to the family occasion which nobody else can bring. For you and for me this morning, we too bring something to every occasion, be it the whole church or be it the small group. You bring your special part to play. And if you're not there or if you don't play your part, the whole family misses out. Let's think about that today and let's think about that as we go in to the week. So let me leave you with the question. Are you spirit filled? Are you spirit fueled? And are you spirit fueled for service? And how is that service working out amongst the people that you know, either in your small group or in your church or whichever part of the body of Jesus Christ you're in? And then what we'll do next time, we'll look up the other three letters of the word salt. So we'll look at A, L and T. But I want to leave you with this. Call upon God and say, Father God, will you fill me? Will you fuel me with your Holy Spirit? Hey, have a great day. Have a great week. Bye. Hi, guys. Us again. And... Uh... Unfortunately. Yeah, unfortunately. We'd just like to say uh, thank you, Rob, for that. That was brilliant. We really enjoyed it and really looking forward to the next part. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, to end to end today, uh, this morning, um, just to remind you, please do get in touch uh, if you've got any questions or um, got any, want any information. Um, how can they do that, Andy? Uh, you can do it through the email address, which... Um, is somewhere. somewhere yeah can't remember where it might be down there it might be over there it might yeah. be yeah i yeah. don't know um but you can also get in touch with us by sending us a message on facebook um you might be able to now i think it's posted on youtube oh, you might yeah. be able to drop us a comment in youtube as well Ooh. and our website there's a contact thing on our website if you're watching it on the website so that's yeah, good yeah yeah we've got so many ways to watch this now so yeah. there's facebook youtube we are going to be internet stars oh my days wait we're not already well i don't know i know i am yeah, who are you? yeah. Oh. yeah all right um yeah so yeah thanks anyway as well for um the update from source and it was great to hear how paul and rob met and Poynton, thank you very much, Poynton. Yes, and Poynton. Can't uh, forget them. That was no, great worship. That was really good. Really um, enjoyed it. And um, life groups. Yes. So we've uh, got toast. Okay. Yep. We've got SK9, and we've got 360 Life. Smashed it. Yeah. Where? Yeah, I remember them all. Yeah, you did. Big That's panic. a big feat for him as well. So yeah. Uh, yes, so um, if you're interested in knowing a little bit more about them, um, so SK9 is run by Paul and Krista. And, and Simon Biff. Yeah. And then Toast, we saw a video from... Last um, week. Yeah, from one of the hosts, so Andrew Firth and yep. Helen. And then 360 Life is Rob and Marion and... Watch it, Jan. Yeah. Boom. So if you're interested in any of them, again, get in touch with us, as we mentioned before. 
the information should be on the outro in a minute. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, and yeah, please join us for our coffee Zoom at the end now. Yeah. Um, the link will be posted very soon. Oh, <laughs> really? Now, I guess. Yeah. Don't know. Awesome. Great. That's it for, from us, guys. Yeah, all um, the way from this kitchen. We hope you enjoyed our lovely magnolia background. Yeah, from Wilmslow Kitchen, guys. It doesn't get any better. Uh, See you uh, in a few weeks. Hopefully. Probably yeah. In person. Oh, yeah. Imagine that, what that'll be like. Yeah, not long now until they lift the restrictions. It's all. Yeah, yes. Have a good week, you guys. And um, yeah, hopefully tune in next week for another talk from Rob. Um, and we'll find out what else. Yeah.